Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for what you've appointed for us today. May your name be praised, Lord, forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shalom, Pastor Light. Are you there? Yes, yeah, sorry, it? somebody called to distract me. Yeah. Okay. All right, servants of God, you're welcome. Because of time, I'm going to invite the first speaker this morning, and uh, we're going to call Bishop, um, one of the bishops here in Cape Town, Bishop Richard Okawa. He is a very dear friend of mine who has demonstrated and manifested grace, manifested skill, and dedication when it comes to the kingdom affairs. And I will lead with us to open our spirit as God's servant will bring Hallelujah. Way, a different packaging is our portion this hour. Please let your spirit be open that we might be blessed. God bless you. Bishop Richard, please, the platform is set, sir. Go ahead and bless God's people. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Um, Reverend Light Easy. I want to thank you for the privilege to uh, share God's word on this platform. Uh, I want to thank God for the grace of God upon your life and also everyone who have been consistently following this uh, prayer line, prayer chain for Global Harvest. We appreciate you uh, for your consistency and your dedication to what God is doing uh, around the globe, especially in this time, this pandemic. Uh, prayer is essential. The Bible says, Jesus said that men ought always, not just to pray, but always to pray and not to faint. So the only way to avoid not uh, fainting is to stay in the place of prayer. So thank you very much uh, for this privilege. I don't take it uh, lightly. I appreciate this opportunity to share the word of God and to lead us in some few uh, prayer points. Amen. Uh, amen. We know we are... Uh, Amen. We are looking at the mantle that was upon that John the Beloved. And to pray, the Bible talks about we should convert endlessly the best gift. So in other words, if you see uh, something in the life of a believer that you desire, the Bible says we can convert it, we can, we can pray about it to have it. So there are certain characteristics and some certain dimension of uh, the manifestation of grace that we, we can look at in the life of our brother, uh, John the Beloved, working with Jesus. I want to start quickly tonight and look at this, uh, how, how the journey, what distinguished this man called John the Beloved from the other apostles that we're going to look at so that we can pray for that grace to begin to function in our lives. Let's look at the book of Matthew, chapter number 17. I believe that this was the beginning of what separated him uh, from, from others. John chapter 17, I mean, Matthew chapter 17, Matthew 17 from 1 uh, to, to 3. We just read that, Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, and after six days, after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up in to a high mountain apart and was transfigured, was transfigured. It means he was changed, metamorphosed before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light 
It was why, and the Bible says, and behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. So I want to start here by saying, we know that Jesus has 12 disciples. But by reason of working with them, Jesus looked at the three to some extent that he could reveal his divinity to. The other apostles never have the access to see the divinity trapped in the humanity of Christ. But John was one of the apostles that your disciples at that time that Jesus found it necessary to take out from the 12 apostles that was working with Jesus. And the Bible says he, he took them to the high mountain. He, he revealed his divinity to them. The, the other nine never saw the divinity of Christ in his human form. But the Bible says this man by the name John, who we let her know as John the Beloved, the Bible says he, he met Jesus, unveil himself, and reveal himself to him. And the Bible says, and he, he saw the divinity, he saw the divinity of Christ. So he moved from knowing Jesus in the flesh to knowing Jesus in the spirit. He knowing Jesus as the son of God without the body. And that was what moved this man by the name John. He had that encounter. He was able to relate to the divinity and the humanity of Christ. He was able to relate to the divinity and he saw what they have been reading. I believe that they must have read about Elijah, read about Moses. But he was privileged. He was privileged to see the, the manifestation of the word grace coming together. He saw that Moses, who was dead, who was not allowed by virtue of the, the work with God, not to enter the promised land. But this man, John, saw in the spirit, in the time of Christ, the time of redemption, the time of grace, this same Moses that was denied entering Canaan, entering the promised land. But in time of Jesus coming, the Bible says a Moses appeared. It means that through Christ, Moses stepped in the promised land and Elijah, he saw. So the encounter of seeing the Petrarch before Jesus came, speaking with Jesus for the manifestation of the word grace, because Jesus had to take law and grace, take law to make grace. Now the Bible says this man saw it. So John, first and foremost, was able to retain, he had an encounter of the divinity of Christ and the humanity of Christ because Jesus was 100% God, 100% man when he was on earth. But John had an access. So his mantle of working with Christ came as a result of him having the revelation and encounter of the divinity and the humanity of Christ. So most of us today, we understand the humanity but we have not get into the dimension of the revelation of the, of, of the divinity of Christ, the divinity of Christ. And then, now we find that they are chapter number three. As they began to journey after the, 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 the death and resurrection of Christ, we couldn't find James. The first miracle that was ever recorded in the New Testament, after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, and uh, the Bible says, in after, after chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, and in the hour of prayer, in the hour of prayer, Peter and John, Peter and John, he, <laughs> hallelujah, Peter and John, the Bible says, they went up, they went up, they went up in the hour of prayer, they went up in the hour of prayer, to pray. That was where they met this man that was born lame. And the first miracle after they were filled with the Holy Ghost was recorded by Peter and John. And this was, this was also one of the two of the, uh, the, 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 the disciples that saw the divinity of Christ. 
So from that point, John had an encounter of Christ. And what made John, this is where I'm going now, this is where we're going to pray. Now, the first thing we are looking at here is that, Lord, I don't just want to walk with Christ. I want to have an encounter with the divinity of Christ. Yeah, the mantle yes, of sir. John began with having an encounter with divinity of Christ. So most of us, we, we, we preach this gospel, we know this gospel, but we have not encountered. We have not had an encounter of his divinity. We have not had a revelation and a revelation and encounter of his divinity. The moment you have an encounter of his divinity, there will be a shift in your work with him. There will be a shift in your work with him. There will be a shift in your work with him. That was the shift that this, our brother, the, the John, the beloved had. He saw the unveiling, the flesh, what Jesus stepped out of the flesh. Hallelujah. He stepped out of the flesh and showed them what made him God, what made him the son of God. So this man began to relate with that dimension. He began to relate with the spirit of the divinity of Christ. Now, what gave him, what made him different from others was because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 21, uh, and this man, the Bible says he was called John the Beloved, John 21 verse 20. The Bible says he always put his head in the breast of Jesus. <laughs> it means he have a close relationship to the heart of Jesus. He understand the heart of the Father. He understand the heart of Christ. He was putting his head in the breast or in the, in the chest of Jesus. It means he understand the heartbeat of Christ. He understood the heartbeat beat of Christ. Many for us to carry this mantle, we have to understand the heartbeat of God. We have to understand the heartbeat of God. The ability to understand the heartbeat of God. And what is the heartbeat of God? Souls. What is the heartbeat of God for all to, to for all to come to, to, to the saving grace of Christ? What is the heartbeat of God for the world to be saved? So this man, Brother John, had the mantle is that the Bible says he, he was always having his heart in the in, in the chest of Jesus. He was having his heart in the chest of Jesus. He had his heart, his head. So his head was always in the heart of Jesus. And then, these are the things we're going to pray about. These three things. So, if we're going to manifest the mantle of John, we must understand, we must have an encounter with the divinity of Christ, because that was what distinguished him. Number two, he, he, he was always placing his head in the chest of Jesus. He was very close to the heart of Jesus. It was very, very close to what the heart beat. What was the heart crowd, Jesus? What was the thing that Jesus was thinking about? He was always putting his head. That was why Jesus had to know him. Even the disciples know him as Jesus the beloved. Because he was always concerned about what is in the heart of Jesus. The number three point we're going to pray about is that John was able to relate with the divinity and the humanity of Christ. He had the capacity to handle the humanity of Christ and also handle the divinity of Christ. Why did I say so? And just because of time, I will not read it, but I'll just give you the scripture. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 19, 26 to 27, the Bible says when Jesus was on the cross, now the, uh, uh, Mary Magdalene and the Mary mother of Jesus and another Mary that were there, and we didn't record what the other disciples were there. He has the capacity to follow to the end. <laughs> he followed to the end. He was there when Jesus was crucified. And now for Jesus, looking at his biological mother, Mary. Now let's read it. I think it will give us a clear understanding. 19. 19 verse um, 26. The Bible says here, and, um, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by, whom he loved, you see again, whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And they said he to the disciples, behold your mother. And from that hour, their disciple took her to 
his home. Jesus gave his human responsibility to John. He gave the mother, the mother Mary to John. It means that he, he must have been involved in the human aspect of Jesus. Now, so he knew how, how to deal with the humanity and the divinity of Christ. So Christ could trust him to handle his human responsibility. Christ could trust him. That was why Jesus can call him his beloved. So Jesus could discuss you, his human responsibility with him because he could have given him the mother if he had not had relationship with his mother, if he had not been the one he was sending to take care of his mother. So this aspect was not shown in the scripture, but this was what the mantle. So we need leaders. We need leaders under us as pastors that we carry the mantle of John, that we'll be able to deal with our humanity and deal with our divinity. That was what that is what we are lacking today in the church, in the body of Christ, that we don't have leaders, we don't have sons and daughters who carry the mantle of John, who can deal with the humanity of their pastor, deal with the divinity of their pastors. We need this in the house of God. We as leaders, we need it. And we are going to pray today, Lord, the mantle that came upon John was the mantle of his ability to, you know, to have a revelation of the divinity and the humanity of Christ. So every leader, every one of us, we, if we have that encounter, we will be able to manifest the mantle. We're able to manifest the, the life that John lived. You know, the last one was that it was so real that he was also having the, the revelation, also the mantle of, 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 of having the revelation of the future. So he wrote the book of John. He, they could not kill him because he was carrying something that he needed to share, which is the revelation we are talking about today. So we are going to pray for that access. We are going to pray today. I want you to pray because that was what changed the life of John, his ability to encounter the divinity of Christ. He saw Moses, he saw Elijah. I want us to pray quickly for the next 10 minutes. I want us to pray and declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to encounter the divinity and the humanity of Christ to carry this mantle of John, we must go to where he started from. Not just that he was a disciple, but on the mountain of transfiguration, Jesus revealed his divinity to John. Can we open our mouth this morning and declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to have an encounter with the divinity and the humanity of Christ. I want to have the full revelation. I want to have that revelation so that I can also manifest this mantle of the divinity of Christ. Can we be begin to pray quickly tonight. Can, this morning, can we declare, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I don't just want to pray. I don't want to pray. I don't want to May we encounter humanity and divinity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the Christ is Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of man, as John did Father, in the name of Jesus, John encountered with the humanity and divinity of Father, we pray that you you help us, Lord. That Father God, we pray for this man, Lord, to know you, to know you, to have a revelation of God, of who you are. In the name of Jesus, oh Karabakhan, oh yes, Lord, oh yes, Lord, we are praying for the damn empowerment. Encounter 
You can unmute. Bishop Richard. Bishop, can you please unmute yourself? Oh my God. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. The last Amen. one we're going to pray. Amen. Thank you. We are going to pray for God. We're going to pray for God. Now, because Jesus could trust John to handle human responsibility of the mother. So we're going to pray, Lord, the grace, that when you have a human responsibility, the grace to trust us to handle it. Now, he understood his divinity, but God could, Jesus could trust him to handle also his human needs. Let's pray tonight, Lord, let's let the grace to be trusted. If you need to handle things in the physical, the grace to be trusted, to handle it, to, 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 to handle what you could have done physically if you were here. Because Jesus was living, he gave him the responsibility to handle what you could have done if he was still alive physically. I want us to pray for that man, to pray for that grace, that God will trust you anything he wants to do, he can trust you with it. And we open our mind and pray in the name of Jesus. in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen. Unmute. Bishop, can you unmute? I see all this on YouTube. Amen. Um, I, I, I want to say, um, I want to just pray with us um, because so that the next guest, we have time to 
to, to also lead us. Uh, thank you for the privilege. Father, I thank you today for this revelation, this revelation that you have shared with us, that the mantle of John began by him having access, the encounter of transfiguration, mm. having an encounter to, 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 to the divinity and the humanity of Christ. And that, that was the beginning. He didn't just deal with the humanity of Christ. He had an encounter with the divinity of Christ. We ask today that we will not just read Christ in the letter, read it in the scripture, but we'll begin to have the spirit encounter, the spirit encounter of Christ, the spirit encounter of Christ in the name of Jesus. And I therefore speak also, Father, that we will have the ability to be, in, to be close to the heartbeat of God, which is global harvest. Global harvest is the heartbeat of Christ. Global harvest yes. is the heartbeat of God that will be connected to global harvest in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll be able, oh God, to come to the level where you can trust us to handle, oh God, your human, oh God, demands that you can trust us to carry it out in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you tonight, Amen. this morning, for what you have done. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you. Amen. Wow. wow. Thank, you so, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bishop Rich. Rich. That awesome. was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's indeed from above. God granting us amen. the thank privilege to, to win his trust. To win his trust. Yes. To the point that he will yes. entrust us with things that are private to him. Things that are private yes. to him. Thank you. Yes. What a revelation. The Lord bless you, sir. All right. We are going into the yes. second dimension of the ministration. And herein, I want to invite God's servant, Apostle Nietzsche Daniel, to take the stage and bless God's people. Sir, please go ahead. The platform is set. Apostle, sir. Please unmute. Okay. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Good morning, uh, Pastor Light. Good morning, everyone that has connected. We are still going to pursue the mantle of John the Beloved. Um, sure. Let us look at John chapter 13, and we will read from verse 21. I want to thank the Lord for Bishop Okawa for what he has uh, picked up. Um, the Lord will help us to take it from there. John chapter 13. I believe you can hear me. Yes, sir. All right, verse 21. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, what the Lord is showing me here, just like Bishop Richard mentioned, is that there was this intimacy that John had with yes, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, like he, so Bishop Richard said, he leaned on his heart. But I want to show you something else. The, Peter was on the same table with Jesus. And if they were on the same table, Jesus could have had Peter. Then, but Peter asked John to ask the Lord. In other words, Peter, who oh. was the head of the disciples recognized that there was something that John carried in the place of prayer. That when he asked, yes, sir. he will receive response. Look at it again. And 
verse 24. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. So Peter recognized that there was something about John. He was close to Jesus. They were all on the same table. But he asked John to ask the Lord. Did the Lord answer? Yes. As soon as John, the beloved, asked, the Lord answered. Verse 25. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered. And he told them. Now, I'm going, the way we're going to is that we will emphasize a point and pray it in immediately. Uh, I'm hoping that by so doing, we will cover uh, a lot of grounds. So we're going to pray. Lord, bring me, bring your servants all over the world to a new level of intimacy that translates in confidence yes, in the place of prayer and to receive mm. response. In the name of Jesus. There cannot be global answer from the Lord. Let us pray. Let us pray over this matter. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you this day. Oh my God, Lena Kopata, Zumbre Nata Zumbo, do get a prata, the Spono, the Prata, 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 the Mighty God, Father, we ask for that grace. Ask for that grace. That grace that will be so close to you, to be so intimate to you, and the trust of the kingdom, of the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me suggest that if you watch me, kindly watch me. When I read, I'll move to the other point. Uh, like I said, that way we may be able to cover a lot of ground. So kindly watch my hands. Once I signal, I'm requesting that we please stop so that we can look at the other point. The other point I want us to look at is John chapter 14, verse 21. Now, you know, all over the world in the church, people have given all kinds of definition of who is it that loves the Lord. But in the John gospel, this is what was said. And it's important for the church. He said, he who has my commands, commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Hallelujah. So the proof that we love the Lord is obedience. And the dividends, dividends of obedience is manifestation of God. So we, we are tired of people just weeping and crying and saying, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, getting quite emotional, but it's not backed up with obedience. And because it's not backed up with obedience, there is no manifestation. Can we ask the Lord, let your spirit move all over the world. Let this mantle be released, that there will be a new emphasis and in obeying the Lord as a proof that we love him and the benefits for global harvest will be manifestation of the Lord in the little efforts we are making all around the globe to reap in the harvest. Can we pray that prayer? Mm, oh Lord, we'll begin to pray this morning. Jesus. We Jesus. are asking Jesus. 
Jesus. Let it be known the proof that I have told you and I can the name of Jesus come before you Lord asking for obedience Lord that I come obedience what you say I must do Lord in the name of Jesus to go to the Asking Lord that our lives we become obedient as the church father in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Father. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh yes, Lord. Okay, I'm here. Hey, I'm here, Pastor. God, thank you, mighty God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we're going to look at this emphasis. If you kindly turn with me to John Gospel, chapter 15, verse 8. There is going to be a release of the impartation for disciples to be raised. The church Amen. at that time needs disciples, not converts. There are a few things that disciples can do that converts cannot do. And look at John 15, verse 8. He said, Herein is my Father glorified that you. Dear, you dear much for so ye shall be my disciples. That ye bear much fruit, that ye shall be my disciples. Now we're going to combine that with the revelation of John chapter 15, verse 16. So we will not know the protection we're asking for. Now, in John 15, verse 16 as recorded by John the beloved. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. And that he has ordained us to be a fruit. You know, sometimes we overemphasize the ordination of men and play them on the ordination of the Lord. Yeah. In the spirit before the Lord comes, if we must have massive global harvest, we must release and empower those whom the Lord himself has ordained. So we're going to pray. Lord, there be massive fruitfulness for two reasons. Because the sun, the, the field of the Lord, and number two, all the people that the Lord has chosen and then should be given the liberty to bear fruit. Let us pray. Let there be an urgency for the bearing of the raising of disciples. Let there be an urgency for the release of the people that the Lord says he has chosen them. They may not have gone through the human nation. The Lord says, I have chosen them and I have ordained them. And this was brought out to us by John. Let's say, oh Lord, let this in particular come in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, well, that be in particular. For your hands to rest upon us and let us hold on. Father, in the name of Jesus, Christ, I'm in a man. Praying, Father God, 
through Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we bear fruit, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to go to England. Thank you, Father, for choosing us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for choosing us, Father. We pray, Gengostiam, that we will bear fruit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for choosing us, Carabash in the Rubush and Mamma Carabash in the Rubush and 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 the Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the, uns- to the circumcised. Now, please listen. John was able to discern the grace that the Lord Jesus has given to other ministers. John is in the company of leaders who do not think that only them are qualified to do the work. John was in the company of leaders who did not think he was called to do everything. And John, as well as James and Cephas, perceived that there was the grace of the apostleship towards the Gentiles. Um, Yes, towards the Gentiles, given to Paul and Barnabas. And the Bible said they gave them the right hand of fellowship. I'm sure you know that part of the challenge in fruitfulness, global harvest, is that people do not discern. People do not recognize leaders sometimes fail to appreciate the grace given to others. And so they do not give them the right of way. They do not encourage them. They do not extend the right hand of fellowship. Can we ask for this impartation upon leaders? That church leaders will be those who will receive the impartation, ability to see the grace given to others and extend the right hand of of fellowship, not fight them through the TV media, not preach against them, but extend the right hand of fellowship so that while they do what they have been in grace to do, they themselves will do what they've been in grace to do. Can we pray this prayer this morning? Father, we begin to pray this morning. and <laughs>
if you look at John chapter three, there is a concern that John, the beloved, raised. He said, nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. I, I am convinced that John the Beloved raised this matter because he was concerned that leaders, because of their status, because of their position, they idolize themselves rather than the Lord. And one of the things the gospel needs all over the world is rulers, leaders, political leaders, economic leaders, and you know, industrial leaders. If they come in fully into the gospel, we don't want secret disciples. If there has to be global harvest, uh, I, I don't think we need secret disciples and we need rulers who will not care more about their reputation over identifying publicly with the Lord. Can we ask therefore, let there be this release of the mantle that will bring leaders, rulers, to a place where they stop caring about their own reputation, but they will openly put in their resources, their training, and use their position in government and in the industries and in the, econo in the economy to advance the gospel. Let us pray that prayer. Father, we begin to pray this morning. Oh Lord. Let there be a move that all right let's look. amen amen now let's look at Acts three this is a mantle that the church needs badly now Acts chapter 3, the mantle for the miraculous in the preaching of the gospel. Acts chapter 3, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. You know this, the rest of the story. Verse 6. Then Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So... Peter and John carried Amen. the mantle of the miraculous. Now, let me say that if God will oblige us with miracles, it will become easy to activate global harvest. The people have had words, had stories. They want to see the manifestations of God's power. And the people saw the manifestation of God's power at the gate of the temple. And remember that there was an empty religious observance inside the temple. But when that miracle happened, then the whole system was upset. 
Because the man who was healed was jumping and leaping and praising God and came into the temple. And it was the whole system, the whole religious system collapsed. And then they began to look for answer. And that, that was why verse 16, look at Acts chapter 3, verse 16 was told them. And they were told, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you okay. see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Somebody say amen. So we're going to pray two prayers. Number one, oh Lord, let there be the release of the mantle of the miracles. Number two, let men be careful not to take the glory of God when these miracles happen. Because verse 16, the people were now looking at Peter and John as if they were people that were special. They pointed the people back to the Lord. Sometimes when miracles happen, we consume the glory. So we're going to pray for these two matters now. Lord, release the mantle of the miracles upon the church. That miracles, signs, and wonders shall be done in the name of Jesus Christ. And it will lead to global harvest. Number two. Lord, let there be this mantle of humility that seeks to give glory to God. That people will be pointed to the Lord instead, to, instead of us when the miracles happen. Can we pray these prayers? Father, we just begin Mighty to pray. Mighty God, they now speak up on those who pray that are not as yet. So we are relieved of the power. I teach you what I am saying. Our men are coming to the power of 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 the Upon the church, Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you have said, Father, for some oh yes, Lord, when we preach the gospel, oh let Lord Jesus, we must be followed by signs and wonders, Father, in the name of Jesus, release Osiam, this mental over the church, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you did Osiam to be approved, Father. Father, who shall release this mental father upon the church who has spread. And Father, when we are signed the Lord, Father, how many parts and children You can unmute the person. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, can I show you something? Many people have said it that there is likely to be persecution against the church before the Lord comes. And one of the mantles that John carried was resilience to persecution. He yes. was he was tough so in the field, in the, in the face of persecution. Can I show you from scriptures? The same Acts of the Apostles yeah. chapter four. After the people saw the miracle at the beautiful gate, Peter and John were arrested. We know that. And look at what happened in John chapter 4, sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge, for we cannot, hallelujah, for we cannot but speak the things which Amen. we have and have had. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorify God for what had been done. Hallelujah. Now, let's... We're no more talking about persecution for the future. Persecution has started in some nations already. There are many nations where in some regions you can't preach the gospel openly. In Europe, in America, in parts of Africa, in, in parts of Nigeria. So persecution has started. So we're going to ask Lord, release this mantle of toughness, defiance, 
resilient against persecution. That your people sh shall be bold to declare for the Lord and not deny the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray. This mantle is very important. Father, we begin to pray. This we know for the mental of resilience, Lord, in the name of Jesus, upon the church, Father, the mental of resilience upon us, Father, the of the name of Jesus, that, Father, when we face situations, when there is persecution, that we will not compromise, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to go to the that we will stand to the truth, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that we will stand for the truth, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, it is not like you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, 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 Ah, I don't know what time I have. Maybe this will be the last point. But if you look at John chapter 21, John chapter 21, let me read from verse 5. As recorded by John the Beloved. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. Now, notice, again, Peter and John and some of the disciples went back to fishing. But it was John who recognized what the Lord was doing. It is the Lord. This person is the Lord. And the reaction of Peter showed that Peter didn't know that God was the Lord. As soon as John said it was the Lord that Peter became ashamed that he was naked and covered himself and plunged into the sea. I know this matter borders on intimacy with the Lord, but I want to go to another dimension. Can the Lord release a mantle all over the world where leaders can recognize what he, the Lord, is doing? Because if we do not recognize the things the Lord is doing, we may fight against what the Lord is doing. Now, many times all over the world, people come with a vision. And some leaders in the city, in the nation, in the region, do not see that is the Lord. And they fight what the Lord is doing. And if there must be a synergy for global harvest, then let there be a mantle that will be released globally that people can recognize what the Lord is doing and give way to the Lord. Can we pray that prayer? Oh Lord, this was one of the mantles that John carried to recognize the Lord, to recognize thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for reminding us of the grace. We recognize, Lord, what you are doing. We just understand what we are doing. We are about to make the night of the Lord. We pray for the grace that was enjoyed. Heavenly Father, you are to recruit you. That was to be in the way of the Lord. And 
in the mighty name of jesus i probably have one time for this one more prayer now if you look at john 18 from verse 15 the gospel let me read verses 15 and 16. Now, this was after the Lord Jesus was arrested. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Now, that disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Now, I see something in this. Sometimes we are too spiritual to relate with the political powers, religious, I mean, traditional leaders and powers in the judiciary. You will notice that John had this mantle that he related not only related with leaders in the political cycle. The Bible said that they knew him. The religious leaders knew John. And he could follow Jesus into the court, into the hall. But they wouldn't allow Peter to come in. And what, what do you notice? John was not satisfied that only him had the recognition of the powers that be in the political and religious circles. He spoke for Peter. That was the only way they allowed Peter in. Look at it again. And Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest. He was known to the high priest. So he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Can we ask all of for this mantle that we, our influence does not end only in the church. We must have influence over religious leaders, political leaders, people in the judiciary. You know, we must have influence. And as our influence opens door for us, can we speak to our brethren that they may also have access into these places where they can be more influential in advocacy for the gospel? Can we pray that prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive the grace for this grace for the grace to carry in the name of Jesus. in the political sphere, in the judicial sphere, in the name of Jesus, the economic sphere, in Jesus' name, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, oh yes, Father, we are praying for that grace, Lord, that the church may arise, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, take over to the man that the church may come 
Oh yes, Lord, we give you glory I, I think my time is up now, Pastor Lights. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So can we thank pray? You, Father, we want to thank you and bless you for John the Beloved. Thank you for the aspect of the mantle he carried. We covet those, oh Lord, so that we will be better equipped, yes, Lord. more influential in advancing the gospel. Bless all your servants who have been part of this. Bless Pastor Light in his uh, doggedness and his effort to advance this vision. Good. Your name in the highest. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you so much, Apostle mm -hmm. Daniel Onyechi. Thank you. You have been a great blessing to this platform from the very beginning. I remain sincerely and truly grateful. Thank you, sir, for doing it again. Thank you, my dear friend, Bishop Richard. Thank you. It was awesome. You people have brought some insight that we will never forget in this life. And please remember, these things are recorded. Go to our YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel and all the ministrations, you will find them there. YouTube channel, Global Harvest Prayer Network. You will see all our ministration. Now, before we take the communion, which I'm going to ask uh, Bishop Richard to bless the communion. I hope Bishop Rich is still in the house. Now, before we take the communion, I want us to pray this prayer. The whole of this week, we prayed for the mantle of D.L. Moody, the mantle of uh, Bab Babalola, Babalola, that incredible man that lived in, in, in Nigeria. We prayed for the mantle of A.A. Allen, the mantle of Maria Woodward Eater, and the mantle of John the Beloved, which we did today. I want us to begin to give thanks to the Lord. The Bible said, he that asketh, receive it. He that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. He that knock, the door shall be opened. We have been asking for God to release these mantles Of the of the of, of the servants of God across all of Africa, I come into every community. You see all of these men in their numbers. You go to Portacot, which where Apostle Nyechi lives. You see one hundred dear Moody's men and women manifesting the the mention of grace with Babalola manifested, and A. A. Alice, Maria Woodward Eater, John the Beloved. You see a multiplied number of such people in Lagos, in Cape Town, in Johannesburg, yes, in London, in Canada, in every nation. This is our prayer. And when you pray, believe. I want us to begin to thank God for releasing this mantle in every community, in every island, in every city, in every nation, in the name of Jesus. Let this mantle manifest in your life and in your own house, in your own house, upon your children, upon your spouse, in your local assembly. Let these mantles begin to manifest everywhere in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Lord, we come before you that Father God. Thank you so much, Kosiam and Amanda. Jesus mighty name we pray. Come out and come Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we lift up our hands. Oh God, we lift the entire Africa unto you. Oh, yes, Father, we lift Lord. the entire Asia unto you. God, mm. we lift every community, every city, every government, every institution, all this phase of the mm. society in all of Africa, in all of Asia, in all of Australia, in every island, in Oceania. We lift up every city, every community in all of North America, in all of South America, in all of the UK, in all of <coughs> Europe. We lift these nations, we lift these communities, we lift these cities unto you. Oh, we are asking, oh God, let these mantles fall everywhere that there will be such a conflagration, there will be such an explosion of revival as a result of these mantles manifesting in the lives of men and women, youths, old and young, everywhere. Let it be, oh God, that there will be a name flux of these mighty revivalists that lived. Oh God, let there be, oh God, a multiplication of the grace that was upon them. Multiplication of the grace that was upon them in the lives of your people across the nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, leading to a great revival as never before. Leading to a great revival as never recorded, as never seen, in order to fulfill the scripture that says that it shall come to pass in the latter days, that the knowledge of the glory of God shall be the earth and the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of the glory of God shall fill the earth and the waters cover the sea. Father, this is our prayer and let your name be glorified. Thank you for releasing the mantle. Lord, all over the nations, we receive that which belongs to us. We take hold of that which belongs to us. We take possession of that which belongs to us. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. Um, amen. Is Bishop Rich in the house to bless the communion? Thank you, Jesus. Bishop Richard? Mm -hmm. All right. 
Apostolonyechi Daniel, can you please uh, bless the communion for us? Amen. Apostolonyechi, sir. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Okay, I can pray. I think I'm here now. Okay, all uh, right. And uh, the network was bad. Okay, I'll pray. sorry for that. Yes, please. Follow up thank you. Every man is the product of Christ. It is Christ, the anointed one, and is anointed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this, oh God, communion, oh God, may God open us up to this mantle that we desire in the name of Jesus. Let this communion, oh God, open us up to this mantle that we desire in the name of Jesus, especially the mantle, oh God, Amen. of join the beloved. I have prayed, let the communion become the So shall it be, Father, we declare done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let's partake of the communion, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Amen. number on the chat box so we can have you captured in our system and you'll be receiving communication from us the lord bless you remember we don't meet on saturday and sunday but we are meeting again from monday please last next week is the last is the last week of this season. so and you know that the last the best comes last the best comes last so prepare to be part of this in the new week. Invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite your co-laborers in the ministry to partake of the closing week of this great assignment. And God will, God will reward you, you know, gracious. All right, the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and strengthen you and cause you to be fruitful in the work of your hand. And make you a living testimony, a living testimony of life to the praise of his name. The work of your hand shall prosper. As you go to church this weekend, God shall use you. Amen. 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 The grace of God, the might of God, the power of God, the anointing of God that is found in the life of this revivalist.
shall reflect in your ministry as you minister. The gift that worked in them will work in you in dimension that is unusual in the mighty name of Jesus. The work of your hand shall prosper. You shall not fall victim of the devices of the enemy. Of fashion against you shall prosper, and any tongue that rises in judgment against you will condemn it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are born mm -hmm. for the top, and mm -hmm. you are one of them that are to stand out as living mm -hmm. testimonies, living testimonies mm -hmm. of the wonders of God in this generation. Mm -hmm. Shall be in the name of the Father, the Amen. Name of the Lord. in Jesus' Amen. mighty name we pray. Amen. I declare God's peace in your family. I declare God's blessing upon your family. God's peace in your Amen. family. God's peace in your family. God's blessing Amen. in your family. God's healing in your family. God, God intervene in your family. And Amen. that God is laid down. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. Surely. Amen. Amen. Very good. 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 Very good.